Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry topic. And we're going to have a look at video number 17, the second of the three processes used for the production of sodium hydroxide. Remember the context of this is the electrolysis of sodium chloride um, to produce sodium hydroxide as a commercial industrial uh, product. So we looked last time at the mercury cell and the mercury cell was great, high purity, um, good quality of product, but expensive and also the problems with mercury as a, a waste product being released into the environment. So an alternative to that is the diaphragm process. And we'll have a look at the diaphragm process in a little bit of detail, make comparisons with the mercury cell and then look at how it was further refined into the uh, membrane a little bit later uh, in a future video. So this was the first commercial cell, so the first one that was actually uh, used on large scale for sodium hydroxide uh, production. Both the electrodes were inert. This time we were trying to form an amalgam, so uh, no mercury this time. We had uh, iron mesh or steel as the cathode and a titanium anode as before. Neither of these participated in the reaction, so what we had um, as for the previous cell was chlorine, uh, in solution, uh, forming chlorine gas and uh, two electrons in an oxidation process that was occurring at the anode. And the sodium ions which were migrating to the cathode uh, were doing so through an asbestos diaphragm. And I'm sure you can already start to see one of the reasons why this um, also had to be uh, improved on as a commercial process. Uh, because there was no separation this time of two different processes, both were occurring together, the sodium ions were not being, um, uh, were not being reduced. Instead, uh, it, was water, uh, it was hydrogen from the water that was being reduced. So um, in this case, we had um, water molecules which were gaining electrons um, to form hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. And of course, we just uh, make sure that that's balanced. Two of those there, uh, two and two is four and two of those there. So um, there's your process. Um, as, as you can see, um, lazy me often forgets these subscripts. Please don't do that uh, in your exams. Um, but that's the process. So this is the, um, ox, uh, this is the reduction process that's actually occurring at the cathode. This is the oxidation process that's occurring at the anode. And the sodium ions were migrating through a diaphragm which split this cell into two halves uh, and moved across through that diaphragm into the side where these hydroxide ions were being produced um, at the cathode. So here a kind of a breakdown of each of these processes, what we can actually see going on. Um, so in the first instance, because the sodium ions remain um, in the solution at the beginning and at the end, they are spectatorized and therefore they're not included in a net ionic equation. Uh, what we have are the chloride ions from the brine, uh, the water obviously there as well participating in this particular reaction. Our two gases of uh, chlorine and hydrogen both being given off, one at the cathode and one at the anode and our other product of the um, reduction of water was the uh, hydroxide ions. When we put these together as full equations, we get our product, our desired product, which is the sodium hydroxide, and this is the reason we're doing this particular process. So notice this time it's just a single cell. It's just one cell that's actually split in the middle by a diaphragm. That diaphragm separates the two half cells where both oxidation and reduction are occurring. So the titanium anode where oxidation is occurring is on the left as you're looking. And reduction is occurring at the cathode uh, on the right. And the sodium ions are actually migrating through this asbestos diaphragm from the left side from the oxidation half cell into the reduction half cell, which means that when we uh, remove or we pump out the solution, uh, there's a higher concentration of sodium hydroxide present. This can be done in a series of small cells, again, uh, relatively high volumes of uh, voltages 
and also um, uh, currents. Problem that we have with this one is purity. Um, the purity is only moderate. It's not as high as what we got in the mercury cell. Um, and that's partly because we still have um, unreacted sodium chloride that's basically persisted all the way through. Um, we may also get a, a an, another product forming the chlorate molecule um, or chlorine oxide, if you like, um, depending on whether it's an ion or a molecule. And that can also be present in the brine. We've looked at um, uh, hypochlorite. Uh, hypochloric acid and um, so that iron can also have uh, some implications when it's in the solution. The uh, two byproducts again are hydrogen gas and chlorine gas and chlorine gas has its own uh, issues uh, in large quantities if it's released directly into the atmosphere but the bigger problem with this one was the presence of asbestos in the diaphragm. So if you think about this little separation between these two cells the fact that this is where the source of one of the major problems with this cell is, and it's the one that needs to be solved as we move on to our final um, process. Cost of this one, much lower than the mercury cell. We've solved the problem of mercury. We haven't solved the problem of asbestos yet, but we'll do that uh, in the final video in this little series. Thanks for watching.